obedience. 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 Obedience, obedience is a cornerstone of our faith in God. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Being obedient requires faith in God. Without faith, it is impossible to walk with God. I will. Obedience. Obedience. Obey God. Hey, hey y'all. It's Ashley. And Shantavia, aka Shay. And, and this, this is, is Obedience Podcast. Podcast. Oh, my nose is itching. <laughs> At the wrong time. Like it didn't want to itch we until like, like came four on. minutes for your nose to itch. Okay, no, let's get out the way today. <laughs> I'm delicious. <laughs> digging in it. I know, right? I wouldn't do that. Um, so we'd like to welcome you guys to another live interview. We're in a whole nother month. We are. we are in the month of May. We're like five months in. Hallelujah. Um, so we want to welcome you guys to another interview. It's Tuesday and happy Tuesday to everybody. Hope that you guys had an amazing day and are ready for this interview on tonight. Yes, I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. So before we start this interview, be sure to go ahead and hit that like button. And if you're new here, go ahead and subscribe and then hit that bell notification so you are notified every single time. We upload those instructions on instructions are on the screen mm -hmm. if you forgot it. Just in case. <laughs> you know, we all learn a little different. Some of us learn, you know, visual learners. You need the written down. I know? am. I'm one of those people, so don't Me feel too. bad. I got to do stuff. I got to put my hands on it and do it for myself. That's how I learn. So before we get started, after you guys have go ahead and shared and just subscribed and all of that good stuff. We want to go ahead and start off with a prayer and just invite Holy Spirit in to come in and minister on tonight. So go ahead and bow your heads, only if you're not driving, okay? <laughs> All right. So, Father God, we just want to thank you so much for today. Thank you because this is the day that you have made, so we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you so much for bringing us together one more time. We thank you so much for our viewers. We thank you for our interviewee on today. We just pray and invite you in on tonight. We pray that someone leaves with the knowledge of your promises, God, that they receive uh, just a, a knowledge of who you are and what is entailed in um, getting to know you in the relationship, uh, in their personal relationship and what is they can take from that as well to knowing your promises and to just change their life as well and their walk with you as well. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Ooh, that was good. Huh? It's my, my little smart. I've been doing that so much lately. I'll be like, Lord, help my tongue. You help have. My, the little hood side. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Gotta go back in. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead. If you are here, go ahead and drop a vote in the chat. So we see that you are here. We already see that the purpose one dropped. A boat in the chat, and our good friend God got you, girl. Yeah, we see you in the chat as well. So go ahead and drop a boat in the chat so we know that you're here. Even if you want to be a quiet listener, just drop a boat <laughs> so we can speak to you just one time. So you're welcome, you're welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, and then you can go back to being quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so while y'all are dropping y'all boats in the chat, I want to go ahead and introduce our very special guest for today. So she has been on the show before. We interviewed her um, during our Flip the Switch series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was an amazing interview. Um, and during that interview, um, we actually, well, yeah, we made a connection and she ended up being my mentor. So I do know her on a very personal level and she knows me on a very personal level. And I can see speak boldly and confidently and say that her um, Beautiful Me Ministries is a great service if you need mentorship in any area of your life. She is going to be an extreme help to you, but we chose her because we know that she's definitely going to stick to the promises of God just by listening to her testimony. And so we thought it perfect that she is one of our first interviewees. Yeah. When we're talking about the promises of God. That's right. So I want to go ahead and bring her in here so we can get this interview started. And I want to introduce to you all Minister Lakeisha Collins. Woo! Hey. Hey. 
How are you? Wait, let me get my camera right. Doing amazing. How are you tonight? I'm good. I'm good. Bless the holy favor. Building glow. <laughs> <laughs> You look great as always. Thank you. I see I'm in the spirit. I put on a black sweater and I got some little red on my lips and y'all got on red and black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> here for it. So thank you again for joining us. Um, to our viewers, if you guys don't know, we like we always love a good game, right? Mm -hmm. We always like to break the ice um with the ice break and have a little game on tonight. So as stated before, we do have a new game. So you ready for this? All right, let's go. <laughs> so I'm gonna uh, briefly explain it. So we just came back from a little trip to uh, from the beach, from Destin, mm -hmm. and we played one of the game, which is called Culture Tags. Ah, Basically, okay. we're gonna give you um, some letters, and uh, it's pretty much like a something hashtag. that, uh, yeah, like a hashtag, like something mm -hmm. that you say it's a culture. Okay. Um, <laughs> and we're Throw out some clues to you, so you're gonna have to guess it. Okay, so we made it just a little easy, so that all of these themes or categories are mm -hmm. All right, all right, all right. Okay, I'm I believe, ready. I believe that you get all of these. <laughs> we gonna see. Don't let us down now. <laughs> Pretty much to it. Y'all come up with it. Go ahead and throw it in the chat. Yeah. She might need it. <laughs> All right, so this first one, remember the category is church. Okay. So that's the hashtag. So let me think. So you'd usually say this if something is going wrong. Fix it, Jesus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. All right, all right, that was easy. Okay. Yeah, we like to, you know, give you a little grace and start off a little easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next one. So we usually say this when uh <laughs> do something wrong, and uh we be like, he he be no. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I know. God knows my heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he be knowing. He know I'm gonna do wrong. <laughs> <laughs> We need to throw that one away. Yeah, we do need to throw that one away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Okay. So the next one. He <laughs> is famous for saying this. Get ready, get ready, get ready. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that was> funny. <laughs> oh. Yes. All right. That one was really on the card. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Had to throw the TV up for now. All right. So the next one. Um, we say this one when, when someone asks us how we doing. The really, really church people be like, "I'm blessed and highly favored." <laughs> 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 oh, wow. yeah. Y'all heard uh, <laughs> Save the Sanctified Fill with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> yeah, I heard that one. What's another one? <laughs> blessed, too blessed to be stressed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. So, this next <laughs> one, I know it's a song. Is, is it? No, that's not it. Um, I'm thinking you make it a else. song? I don't think of another song. Oh gosh. I mean, I mean, some help. You need life mm -hmm. so. <laughs> When the when the doors of the church is open. Is that one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't come from the Baptist church. I grew up Baptist. Um yeah, that one. No, not one. Oh, that's a good hand though. Yeah, that's that's why I was like, I need some help because I can get that out of my brain. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, the next one. Oh, uh, so scenario the preacher get up, he'd be like, Amen, church, and then he'll the, the volume ain't like he, he wanted, it. And then he says, This she said a whole scene. Of, yeah, I gotta set the scene like the dramatization. <laughs> 
Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Wait a minute. Give me another hint. Give me another hint. Ooh, child, I ain't got no do. Um, oh. you can say, um, so I put somebody single solo and the crowd get up oh, and they okay. clap. That's good. You can do better than that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, you gotta do that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's seven. That yeah, was that's awesome. it. That's that's right. good. I like that. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> I was when I was playing. Yeah. Yes. It was a struggle. I yeah. had a little headache. <laughs> I, <laughs> I really got so It's a good day, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. I got mine from Target. Oh, okay. But you can order it from the website as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. I've been looking at it. Yeah, it's fun. It's a fun game. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of cars, so I don't think you'll run out. That's yeah. why I always bring it I realized it was a different like category, too. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. God, I got to feel that she only one of those. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> I've been in charge my entire life. I, I didn't hear it at all. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. So before we get into these questions, we just want to let y'all know if y'all do have any questions, all of our viewers out there, throw them in the chat and we'll add them to our list of questions. Or you can DM us if you want to be anonymous. Yeah, we'll keep you anonymous. So in our introduction video, um, Promise Seeds that Ashley did, she discussed how tradition kind of shaped some of her beliefs um, specifically living abundantly in wealth. And so she would just pray for just enough. So we wanted to know, was there ever a time you thought that you weren't worthy to receive any of God's promises? And if so, how did you overcome those thoughts? All right. Um, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> there has definitely been a time in my life or time in my life where I did not feel worthy um, to receive any of God's promises. And it came from, um, so I've been, I've been in the church literally my whole life. Um, so, which means mo all of my sinning been done in the church, <laughs> you know? So when I was living wayward, saved, but not really just fully surrendered to the Lord, um, when I finally did, you know, resurrender, um for the third fourth or, or fifth time uh <laughs> there was still like this condemnation um that made me feel like because i had you know done certain things wrong um that it disqualified me for the promises of god or the blessings of god um that because i hadn't lived this perfect christian life um that you know, it was just certain things that I just shouldn't even ask God for, mm -hmm. um, or, you know, certain promises that just didn't even apply to me anymore because um, I had sinned and fallen short. And so for me, it was more so condemnation that um, made me feel unworthy because, you know, when you are a believer, but you step outside of the will of God, or you, you know, you're just doing things that you shouldn't do. The first thing that you're going to feel is guilt. You're going to feel guilt. You're going to feel um, you're going to condemn yourself. Other people are going to condemn you. And so um, you, you feel like, you know, it's just like if you're a child and you make your parents mad or you do something to disobey them. Now you're like, OK, I can't go ask them for that twenty dollars that I need because I've been acting up. So I know they're not going to give it to me. But the fact of the matter is you're still their child. And they still love you. And even though you were disobedient, even though you, you know, may have done wrong or whatever you feel like has made you not worthy, you're still their child. Mm -hmm. And you are still um, an heir to whatever they have. You know, your mess ups doesn't disqualify you from being their child. And and if, if, if they have already written you in their will, just because you went and disobeyed them doesn't mean that you're no longer an heir to the will. Yeah. And so for me, th those were the times when I felt um, that I wasn't worthy, when I just felt condemned, when I was condemning myself. But um, God is faithful and just to forgive us. 
and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so the moment that we become his child, we become, you know, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. And so I had to get in the word for myself and accept God's forgiveness and realize that there's nothing that I could do for one, to separate me from the love of God and two, for God to change his mind about me. God's word is his word. God's promise is his promise. And so as long as I get myself back into an back into alignment with him, everything that he says I can have, I can have. Mm -hmm. So yes. Right? I know I'm gonna go back and rewrite this tonight. It's like <laughs> It's so good that you brought up condemnation because we just talked about it in the, talked about it in our last week interview. Mm -hmm. Yeah, last week. Last interview. Um, condemning can can lead to so many negative things, mm -hmm. and you don't even, you know, not even receive the promises of God or anything from God, the love of God. Um, so that just put it back into perspective for people like. <laughs> I mean, there, what scripture says, I can't even, I can't think of it specifically, but it says, you know, there is therefore now no condemnation mm -hmm. to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Once you give your life to Christ, like for, the whole purpose of the blood of Jesus was to wash away any type of condemnation anyway. Yeah. And so God doesn't, God sees us through the filter of the blood of Jesus. So he doesn't even see us dirty. He doesn't even see us as unworthy. He sees us through the cleansing filter of the blood of Jesus. And so condemnation, we don't have no business holding on to that, but that's just what the enemy holds over us to keep us away from the promises of God. Because when we believe in the promises of God and when we receive the promises of God, it builds our faith. And when our faith is built, we become closer to the Lord. The closer we are to the Lord, the further we're going to become away from the enemy. And so, you know, it's just a cycle, one of those tricks of the enemy that tries to keep us away from the Lord. Hello. But not them promises still mine, bro. <laughs> Hello. They don't change. <laughs> I tell y'all all the time, they don't change the status of my uh, yeah. As your mm -hmm. being a daughter of the father. Yeah. Ain't hey. that's, that's it. That's it. receive. That's so good. So put that condemnation down. It's already, it's already been taken care of. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jesus nailed that to the cross. You ain't got to carry that. Yeah, put that thing down. Yep. I yeah, don't want to let the enemy win because it's just a trick that he's putting out there to prevent you from getting closer and closer to God. Absolutely. And get those promises, like you said. Yeah, go get it. When we are say, go get it. I'm sending a single. Uh oh. <laughs> All right. So, how is it? How important is it to for a believer to believe or to know God's promises? Okay. So, number one, you gotta know. You have to know the promises of God. Um, it's important to know the promises of God because, for one, why be in a relationship with someone and you don't know the benefits of being in that relationship? Hmm. Why blindly be in a relationship? If you get a new job, one of the first questions you're going to ask is what are the benefits? Yeah. <laughs> You know, what comes with me getting this job? You know, yeah. what am I going to get out of this? And so once you know what those benefits are, um, it pulls you in. If those benefits are good, it's going to pull you in. Like, yes. <laughs> yeah. And so for a believer, it's important to know the benefits that you have being a child of God. Because if you know the promises that you have access to the promises that can be yours you um you have something to look forward to right you have an expect expectation um and so if you don't know that then what you know you have no expectation of anything mm -hmm. you're just blindly in a relationship right. but then it's one thing to know something and it's a different thing to believe it um 
I'm sorry, guys. Y'all probably hear my daughter. I don't know what's going on right now. But like she's she's having like a breakdown or something. Can I can I kind of look to see what's going on? I'm so sorry, y'all. I'm so sorry. She is screaming. That is so good to like really compare that to like a relationship. Because mm -hmm. you don't have like a, no kind of focus or no area, something that you're working towards. Mm -hmm. What good is it? Yeah, it's kind of like what we were talking about this weekend. Like if you are in a relationship and you don't see the next mm -hmm. stage coming or you don't see where it's going, you want to leave. Right. And if you don't know what the promise is, what the next promise of God is mm -hmm. that you have to look forward to, you might have the desire to leave. Yeah, that's if true. You really don't understand and know them. So knowing God's promises can keep you in belief or keep you focused. Yes. That's so good. Mm -hmm. Because everything, if whether you know it or not, and we do, sometimes do it unconsciously, like we, everything that we do in, in this life, we do it for something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So why wouldn't we treat the relationship, our relationship with God the same way? So we in it for something. Exactly. It's it's a, you have to know like what am I in this for? Yeah. yeah. You know, what am I in this for? And it does when you know what what you can have, what you can, you know, how this relationship can benefit your life or what this person brings to your life, adds to your life, or this thing adds to your life, it will keep it'll keep you there. Because mm -hmm. like these parks are good, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, but but it's another thing to believe the promises of God. A lot of people, a lot of believers know the word of God, know the promises of God, but when it comes down to actually believing it, it's a it's it's totally different. The belief is not there. So it's important that we believe the promises of God because for one if we don't believe the promises then we can't even um gain access to them because for one receiving the promises of God one thing that it, one thing that it requires is faith and so that faith is believing that you know what faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen and so um that's where Believing in the promises of God, promises of God comes into play is having faith. So mm -hmm. I, if, even if I know that I have these perks, if I don't have faith in my access to these perks, then mm -hmm. it does me no good. Right. And so again, it, it ends up being an empty relationship. It's like it's like having the key to this vault, and you know that the vault is full of money, full of jewels, and you you have the key. But you don't believe that if you use the key, it's really going to open for you. Mm -hmm. But it's right there. You know it's there. But I, all you got to do is use the key. Right. And so believing the promises is that key that opens the vault of God's promises. Mm -hmm. And so if if we don't believe, believing is important because that's how we get to manifestation. Right. So. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, each one of our students. I mean, she's just touching on each one of these years. <laughs> like, how you doing it? <laughs> but yeah, it, it's. I'm so glad you brought up the point, like knowing God's word versus applying the word. Because I think we we never really make that. Well, sometimes we can get stuck in making that connection. Mm -hmm. um, well, I know that was it for me, and I thank God for making the transition. And to like apply it. In. I'm really in a season where I'm like really applying God's word now. That mm -hmm. uh, was a bedrock faith series. That was me applying God and getting back in faith and just like, all right, God, I'm gonna turn up my trust on them. Well, I'm gonna turn up my trust. Period. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, apply. that's how. And but that's how. That's really how it works. You know. You. It's like faith is like or believing in the promises of God is like riding a bike. You don't when you first start when you first want to ride a bike, you don't go and get a 10 speed. You know, the first bike you learn how to ride is going to have some uh, training wheels on it. Yeah. You know, and then you're going to work your way up from the training wheels to the little the smaller size bike and then you go up to the 10 speed and whatever comes after that. So it's like when it comes to believing the promises of God, you believe him for something small. You know, it could be 
you know, God, I, I'm, 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 I'm just gonna see God. You said that that if I can ask whatever I, what I, what I want in prayer, and if I believe you'll do it for me. So I, I need this job. I've been on this job interview. I need them to call me back. You know, and then he'll do it. Mm-hmm. That's a training wheel. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> I need, I need a bill paid, and I'm, I'm out of money. And I don't, I don't know what's gonna happen. But you said that, you know, you'll supply all my needs according to your riches and glory. Right. So I'm gonna see. And then when he comes through, then you move on up to the next bite. Mm-hmm. Then you get sick in your body and it's like, Lord, the doctor said they don't know what they can do. But I'm trusting you because you said that you were wounded for my transgressions and you were bruised with, for my iniquities and the chastisement of my peace is upon you. And with your stripes, I'm healed. So I need you to heal me. And then he does it. Boom, you on a 10 feet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so it's taking those baby steps. Nobody walks into relationship with God fully believing you know, we, we have that mustard seed yeah. of faith. And the thing about a mustard seed is that it, it doesn't remain small. Mm-hmm. A mustard seed produces, it grows so big. And that's how our faith is. It starts off small, but the more we utilize it, the more we, you know, plant those seeds of faith, it grows and grows and grows. And we're able to believe more and more God's promises. And two, I don't know if I'm getting ahead, but it's not even so much. I think if we as believers would know and learn the character of God, mm-hmm. then we would have no problems trusting him. That's true. If we would learn his character, God is faithful, period. He's faithful. He cannot lie. He does not change. He's the same. Yesterday, today, forever. He changes not. He cannot change his mind. Whatever he speaks is going to accomplish what it, you know, he's faithful. He's loving. He's, he's uh, consistent. Mm -hmm. And so we learn his character because it's like, if I know the type of character a person has, I know whether or not I can believe them. I know whether or not I can trust them. And so if your character is always that, I can depend on you. You always come through. You always do what you say you're going to do. You're always the way you say you're going to be. Then I know your character. I know that you have integrity. I know that I can trust you. And so it's getting to know God that really is the foundation of being able to believe his promises. It's <laughs> so good. I'm glad you brought up the point of like, too, like going in a relationship, you kind of trust inch by inch. And even mm-hmm. like if we look at our like friendships, relationships, marriages, ultimately you have to give them some kind of trust. Yes. <laughs> so why not do, you know, it's the, it's the same for your your relationship with God. It's right. Like, right. It is. Because you don't go into, into no relationship like trust on 100. Right. Because mm-hmm. like, I'm trying to see. <laughs> Can I trust you? Right. And I trust you. <laughs> and, and you. And you do. It's something that you build. And even in a natural relationship, trust is something that you build. And so even in our relationship with God, he's not he doesn't have to build his trust in us. Yeah. We have to build our trust in him. Mm-hmm. You know, it's up to us to decide or choose <clears throat> um, to trust him or not. Honestly. You know, um, and so every time that God comes through for us, every time that he we see his faithfulness, every time we see that God said he was going to do that and he did it. Every time we see that, every time we um, recognize that we're allowing our faith to be built, every time we go to God and say, God, I'm going to lean on you. I'm going to trust you. And we do not waver. You can't be wavering. Right. (laughs) Do not waver it's an opportunity for our faith to be built. Yeah. One more point and we can move forward. Um, just a little moment for me, like you mentioned like really taking God at his word and like even praying God's word back to him. And I remember when that was first introduced to me, I was just like, you want me to tell God what to do? Like, you want me to tell him? <laughs> you say it that? I'm like, oh, I'm so <laughs> but like, really you, I'd be like, I, at first, I was just like really scared. Like, Lord, you said, oh, don't want me. <laughs> but we really do have to. He want, he gives us his, his his word so that we can, you know, say what he said. Because, like you said, he cannot lie. He cannot take back any of his promises. Mm-hmm. And that's when 
we build our faith, and that's when we build our trust in God as well. So I'm glad you brought, brought up that point as well. He wants us to do that as well. Right. God wants us to try him. Like, yeah. really, like he really does. God, like, try me. Try me. Try me. I think it's, a, I, I'm pretty sure it's a scripture that says something to the effect of try me now and prove me. Yeah. I can't, I can't remember what it is, but I'll find it and I'll send it to you so you can put it in the, in the comments or so or I'll put it in the comments, but it's a scripture about like, try, try me. God's like, try me. I'm going to prove you right, but try me. Is it that, uh, he, He'll pull out the wonders of uh out the That's wonders it. Yes. Pour you out of blessing. Yes, that one. God like try me. I approve it to you. That's so true, because that's what I started on, um, like just praying over my ties. Cause okay. like I Malachi, yeah, okay. So Malachi three and ten. Yes, that's um, it. I I shared before, like my tithing was more like fear, like, oh, I had to do this, but I started learning like this is a principle that God wants us to do. And it had become like even before it was less intimate. So I just started like praying. I give like electronically, just that is one of the scriptures that I pray over my seed when I'm sowing it, or I, like pray over when I'm giving my tithes. So he wants us to do that. Yes. So I'll try. <laughs> try, try Jesus, literally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a witness that he has not failed me. He won't never win. Absolutely. Okay, I threw that um, scripture out there in the chat for anybody who want to go back and study. I'm going to add it to my list mm -hmm. tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in your video, Reclaiming My Crown, you briefly discussed your healing. So mm -hmm. could you share your process of relying on God's promises that he will heal you? Ooh, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had to go back. I really had to go back and see, like, what did I say? What was I talking about? <laughs> but um, that was that was a process. Um, so I'll give you the whole full story. You can go and find that on my YouTube channel. Um, I share a whole full story about my bout with this. Um, it was called hydratinitis supertiva. Like it, it was horrible. It truly, it over, it took my took over my life literally. Um, and <clears throat> I had gone to see so many doctors, had so many procedures, had spent like two years straight just sick. Um, but I trusted God. I knew that God said that He would heal me. I knew that He did. Um, but there were so many times when it didn't look like he was going to, but God and I have a track record where he truly has never, ever failed me. Like literally he has not ever failed me. He has come through for me on so many things. Um, I just, I would go back to the time when my firstborn, he was, three months old, he was diagnosed with um, hydrocephalus. And so he had to undergo um, emergency brain surgery at three months old. Doctors said that he would be developmentally challenged, that he would you know, have to have these surgeries every year, be on medicine, all kinds of stuff. He was sick the first three years of his life. So, so, so terribly sick. Had another brain surgery when he was six months old. But God told me that he was going to heal my son and that he would have no residue from it. My yeah. son is 18 years old now. From the time that he was four years old up until now, he has rarely even had a cold. Wow. Every time he goes to see the neurosurgeon, because he has to go every year, they are astonished that he is perfectly fine. No challenges, no sickness, no anything. He has a shunt. Um, that runs from his head down to his chest. It's there, but his brain is it works fine. Um, just so many instances like that, um, where God had proven Himself to me, so I knew that I could trust Him. <clears throat> um, there were times when it was hard to believe. Um, it was hard to see, not hard to believe, hard to see when it was gonna come, when it was gonna happen. But I just kept leaning mm -hmm. on the promise of God and just keep, 
I kept reminding myself, even when it was hard, even when I was laying up in the hospital, even when I was having surgery after surgery, I kept reminding myself that God can be trusted. Mm -hmm. God can be trusted. I don't care what it looks like. Don't care what it feels like. Don't care how long it takes. God can be trusted. I can trust him. He has proven to me that I can trust him. And so I just have to have faith and I have to be patient. Those were the two things I had to keep my faith and I had to be patient. It's that patience that gets it. Um, But, (laughs) you know, I just had to keep reminding myself that he who promised is faithful. God is not a man that he should lie. He said that with his stripes, I am healed. It's done. It's already done. And so I'm just having to wait for it to manifest in the natural. It didn't happen the way that I thought it was going to happen. But God healed me. Yeah. God li- completely healed me. He really did. Um, My last surgery was in 2019. And since that time, I have had no sickness, no pain. No relapse, no, like, nothing. Perfectly fine. Like, I'm a completely new person. Um, So God did what he said he was going to do. And I never wavered on that. I never wavered because I knew God can be trusted. It was, it sounds simple, yes. Yeah. But I definitely had to keep encouraging myself. Definitely had to stay in the word. Definitely had to keep reminding myself of what God said and reminding myself that God is faithful. It's impossible for him to fail. And I think if we would keep that, just that part at the forefront of my, at the forefront of our mind, when we are trying to believe for God to do something that he said he can do, he, he it's impossible for him to fail. Mm-hmm. There is no failure in him. He, cannot lie he cannot change his mind like he's faithful there's no flaw in him and so that was i just had to to stay focused on god's character stay focused on what god had already proven to me and that was that he can be trusted because he is faithful and he did just what he said he was gonna do Mm -hmm. like he always does always does that always does. It's, it's so good because a lot of the times, if it's not related to something like healing wise, you'll kind of forget the things that you pray for and that you ask for. But like, if you truly sit back and think about it and just think about all the things that he actually answered that you didn't even, that you've been taking for granted, it's so amazing. Mm-hmm. It's also helping you get through those times where it doesn't look like Mm-hmm. what he said is going to be right yeah because that that definitely happens it, it the in that that time between okay god says you're going to heal me or god just says you're going to do whatever you said you're going to do and that time that it actually manifests that in between time mm-hmm. listen the enemy's going to do everything he can right. <clears throat> to try to make you doubt that God is going to listen. God, he can lie. He can lie. He ain't going to do it. It ain't happening. Look. Look at you. Look where you at. Look how you feeling. Look how you struggling. You know? But mm-mm. regardless what it looks like. Regardless. Because there's process. You know? There is process. It's not God is not a magician. You know? We can't just pray as soon as we get up off our knees. Boom. It drops in our hands. You know? That would be great. <laughs> But how how would our faith even be built if if you know God gave us or did everything that we wanted Him to do at the moment that we wanted Him to do it? You know, our faith would never get the opportunity to build its muscles and mm-hmm. grow. So it's that in between time where you have to constantly, you have to constantly, constantly, constantly remind yourself of the Word of God and the character of God. Cause he's gonna do. He's gonna do it. You can rest for sure. <laughs> yeah, you really can. Like what they say, you can take that to the bank. Like that's no cap. That's what they say. No cap on that. No cap. 
<laughs> he's gonna do it. He is going to do it. It's just we have to wait on the Lord. And as we wait on him, what the scripture says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount over wings as eagles. They'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and not faint. So even as you're waiting for that manifestation, God will keep you strengthened. He will keep your spirit up. He will keep you um, sustained. In the meantime, yeah. that meantime does not change what God said. It does not change what he said. That's the stunning part. That part, right? Yeah. That part. <laughs> Ooh, you, you said something. You said, you know, we can rest assured that Satan is going to use us. And he tried to make us look at the actual surroundings of what it looks like. Mm -hmm. The scripture says that we walk by faith and not by sight. Yes. He wants you to look at everything that could possibly, you know, look bad. But mm -hmm. we have to... Um, and our pastor said some time ago, like, we have to walk it out in the spirit before it even manifests. In a mm -hmm. So don't look at the circumstance. Continue to walk it out in faith. Um, continue to just, like you said, just continue to just stand on God's promises. Yes. I, just to add to that, one of my favorite uh, passages of scripture um, is talking about Abraham and how he didn't waver. Like, he faced, I think it's in Hebrews. Did I write it down? I believe it's in Hebrews um, where it talks about how Abraham did not waver at the promises of God, but he he trusted that God was going to do exactly what he said. He mm -hmm. faced the facts. One of the scriptures says he faced the facts. And, you know, that was God had promised him and Sarah a son. Mm -hmm. But Sarah was way beyond, <laughs> way beyond childbearing years. Yeah. And so even though he faced that fact, he faced the fact that the reality was in the natural or to the human eye or just looking at it, this is not possible. However, even though he faced that fact, he still knew that God had the power to do exactly what he said he was going to do. Mm -hmm. So the facts, it, does, it doesn't matter what the facts is. What you see or what you feel can be very real, but it doesn't change the fact that God still has the power and the character to do exactly what he promised. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you got to be like Abraham. Mm -hmm. Do not waver. Yeah. Don't waver, because God, God can be trusted. Period. Period. Yeah, I was just gonna say, like, don't look at the facts. Like, your doc, the doctor said that you know your son was gonna have like developmental issues. But look at him; he's gonna graduate. Uh, I was gonna say college, high school. Oh <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but he's getting ready to graduate, and then also, um. Holy Spirit brought, brought it back to my, my remembrance. Um, and you said a while, well, just in the, the answer, you know, it may not look like how we want it to look like. Like we pray for these things. And we want it like this. We want it like that. And that, and that. But mm -hmm. I think we, sometimes we have to, well, we do have to let go of how we think it should look or how the mm -hmm. world should look. Absolutely. Be. Yeah, because God got the ultimate plan, so we just have to. Exactly, He does absolutely. There's even a um, and I keep saying there's a scripture. I think it's, it's maybe in Isaiah. I'm pretty sure it's in Isaiah. Um, that says um, um, as far as the the heavens are above the earth, so are God's thoughts above our thoughts, and His way is higher than our ways. And so our way is never going to look like God's way. Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of us. That's that's what causes a lot of us to waver, yeah. because. We're looking at it from our perspective. We have in our mind how we want it to work out, how we want it to come, you know, how we want things to manifest. Mm -hmm. God has a completely different plan. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. And so we have to understand that I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. We don't know the plan. Mm -hmm. That's why we walk by faith mm -hmm. and not by sight. Right. Because we can't see it. We can't see it, but we just have to believe it and trust that God knows what he's doing and he's going to do what he said he was going to do. And it goes back to my favorite scripture. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. Like he he got it. We can't lean to our own understanding. That's where a lot of us waver at the promises of God. Thank you. All right. Good job. I got lost. Okay. 
<laughs> that was good. On uh, the next question, so it also in your video of reclaiming my crown, you took a throwback. <laughs> you encourage um, everyone. Well, you encourage us to take our rightful place um, to rec reclaim our crown and allow nothing to take it from us. So how would you encourage someone who is struggling reclaiming the crown and God's promises? Okay. Um, first, it would be important to know, you know, what your crown is. You know, what what what's my crown? What am I reclaiming? And basically, that crown is um, what God says about you. That crown is your identity in Christ. That crown are your blessings, your promises, the promises that God has spoken over your life. That's your crown. And so, you know, life happens and certain stuff happens and it just knocks that crown off our head. Not that God took it off, not that you lost it. Sometimes it just gets tilted. It just gets a little, you know, it's getting knocked, o knocked over or we take it off because we don't feel like we are worthy of it. Mm -hmm. However, um, that crown is still yours. It's still yours. God has not taken it from you. God has not said you can't get it back, <laughs> you know, and so you have to reclaim that by reestablishing your faith and saying, I am going to trust God. I'm going to get in, get in alignment with his word, get in alignment with his will. I'm going to be consistent in prayer. I'm going to be consistent in seeking him. Um, and I'm going to put my crown back on. I'm going to put my my because I'm an heir. I'm a I'm an I'm God's heir. I'm royal. <laughs> you know, I'm above only and not beneath. I'm rich and not poor. I'm the righteousness of Christ. I'm the apple of God's eye. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm rich and not poor. Like I'm a royal priesthood. I'm a holy nation. I'm I'm all this. I'm putting this back on. You know, because um the enemy not playing out here. He is not playing. And if he can take that crown from you, if he can take that identity from you, then he, he knows that he can he can pull you away and have you living beneath your inheritance, have you living beneath the promises of God, have you living beneath your royal standing in the kingdom of God. Um, and so if you're struggling to reclaim your crown and the prom you don't you don't even have to reclaim the promises of God because you never lost them. You have to reestablish your faith. That's good. Reestablish your faith. Refuel your faith. Start in God again. Start trusting God again. Start leaning on God again. Leaning on him. When I think of leaning on somebody or leaning on something, you're putting your weight on that thing. Mm -hmm. And that, that thing has the, the strength and the stability to hold you up. And that is what the promises of God do, does for us. It's that strength. It's that stability that holds us up. Um, um, what's that scripture? It's in Matthew. Hold on. Hold on. I got it. I got this one. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew 4 and 4. <laughs> that talks about um, man cannot live by bread alone. Yeah. The contemporary English version, I like it. It says that um, Jesus answered and the scriptures say no one can live only on food. People need every word that God has spoken. And so we need the word of God to live. We need the promises of God to live. And so you reestablish your faith on the promises of God. Reestablish um, your 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 faith. Yeah, your trust in the promises of God and just get back into alignment because it's leaning on him. It's his word that fuels us. It's his word that um, feeds us, that gives us strength, that gives us life, that gives us hope, that gives us peace. Like we don't live by, you. We yeah, food is necessary to eat regular food and, you know, drink your water. All that is necessary, yes. But we can't live on that alone. We, we live and thrive on every word, every promise that comes out of God's mouth. Mm -hmm. And so you reestablish your your faith, and that is how you reclaim your crown. Reclaiming your crown is just re re realigning yourself with um, 
the promises of God, realigning yourself with who God says you are, realigning yourself with um, your identity in him. And so um, I would just encourage someone who is struggling in that area to just refuel refuel your faith, Mm -hmm. reestablish your relationship with God. What is your relationship looking like? What is your daily spiritual routine looking like? Um, you know, are you praying daily? This is, we got to do this daily, guys. We can't, mm-hmm. you know, just drop in like, yo, God, I need some. <laughs> you know, it's like in a marriage or in a relationship. If you never talk to your partner, you never spend time with each other. How are you building? How are you building your faith? How are you, you know, establishing that relationship? You know, how, how? You can't. It doesn't work like that. And so, um, yes, I would say just reestablish, realign yourself. Yeah. And that's how you you don't even have to, like I say, you don't even have to reclaim the promises, but you just got to put that crown back on. Like, I am who God says I am, and I'm going to walk in this, in the fullness mm-hmm. of this, okay? Yeah. The fullness of it. That alignment example that you gave, it made me think of like, when you're in a car that needs to line in, and you have your crown on and you're in that car and it's just shaking but your crown is just falling off you know mm-hmm. you back up and get it falling off mm-hmm. and then when you go get the alignment your car is going to drive straight going yeah. to um lean out on your own understanding if you don't mm-hmm. let that straight so now we got our alignment with back straight so we're not mm-hmm. bumping and shaky i feel like our crown is great mm-hmm. it's so steady so that's what I thought about when you said alignment. Yes. It's that that alignment changes everything. It re- it truly does. Naturally and spiritually, that alignment changes everything. Yeah. And it goes back to what the bedrock faith slash faith checkup series was all about. Mm-hmm. It was about checking in on where your faith is at the time because it can change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. always important to go back and reevaluate where you are. In one of our episodes, we talked about daily regimens mm-hmm. and why it's so important and why you may need to change it at times. And hey, you may have done a, a faith checkup last month. You may need to do it again because something crazy may have happened. Yeah. It's no limit on the realignment process. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's free of charge, y'all. Y'all don't have to. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yes. Y'all have to go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just open up the words. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Get you one of those scriptures. <laughs> <laughs> we got a free script, um, a free fellow ride there, y'all. We're all, well, not all. So yeah. I'm on 25 promises of God. touching on it. Scratching this out. Yeah. <sighs> Good job. That was good. That was Holy Spirit. That, ooh, thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> we, we, we just invite you again. Come on in. Um, and then, like, when, like, the realignment. That was a wonderful example. And then, like, when you were saying it, it made me think about, like, straighten up. Like, you know, here and be like, hey, child, straighten up. You mm-hmm. know, you got to reflect, like, get back in order to who you have, who God has called you to be, basically. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like you, you leaning off a little bit. So let's mm-hmm. get you know, let's get back in and reestablish, like you said, reestablish like why you here. Yes. So like I said like sometimes you can get a little shaky, and that's why I have my little weekly check in. So God be like, you know, man, this is I mean, right? I need you to help me realign a little bit. And you know, like Shay said, you can do it as many times as you need to. Yes. Absolutely. Just, yeah, and that doesn't make you any less of a Christian. It doesn't, like I said before, like one of them episodes. That doesn't take your Christian card away, you know, just because, right. you know, you need some alignment and you need some mm-hmm. so, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, we have to repeatedly take our cards for alignment. So what makes us think that we won't repeatedly <laughs> need to align ourselves? We live in this flesh and in this flesh, this dwells no good thing. <laughs> you know, this as long as we are in this flesh, we are going to have those moments when we you know, just so much, something is off. You know, emotions pull you, 
life pulls you, whatever. We we're we're flawed in our humanness, and and that's okay. It's okay. God knows that. God understands that. He he he. It's okay. Like he knows everything, <laughs> you know. And so it's okay if you got to realign every other, you know, every every week. If you got to realign, do that. Do whatever is necessary for you to stay in faith. So that you can stay in position to receive the promises of God. And it's important that we know we ha we have to know what these promises are, because when we find ourselves in situations, we need to know what the word of God says concerning that thing. Yes. Um, and I so we, we got to get in, we got to stand our word. We got to get in this word. You know, I don't care how good your pastor preaches. That once a week sermon is not enough. It's not. Okay. You have got to get in this word for yourself. It's so easy to, if you don't have a, a physical Bible, everything is online. Everything is on the internet. You can pull up the whole Bible right on the internet for free. You know, if you're dealing with certain situations, stress, depression, sickness, anger, anxiety, whatever you can find, you know, what does God say about this? And get to know what he says, know what his promise is concerning that thing. And that's how you learn to lean because first you got to know what you're leaning on. Mm -hmm. You got to know what you're leaning on. Exactly. You can't be just, just leaning to be leaning. <laughs> you know, know what you're leaning on. So get to know what, what, what has God said? What, what, what promises is out there for me in, in the word for me, not out there, but what promises are in the word of God for me? And start believing God because he can be trusted. It's us that have the problem with faith or has the problem with trusting. And two, I think it's important to note that another reason that it, that it is important to know what God says or what God promises about things um, is because sometimes we can want something that God never promised. Mm -hmm. But because we we want it, and we know we hear that scripture that says, "Anything I ask in prayer, believing, I can receive it." But we miss that part about praying amiss. Right. And so when whatever it is that we want doesn't happen, we feel like God failed us. Mm -hmm. But no, did God say that? Because there's a difference between what we want and what God promised concerning the thing. So we got to know these promises. So that when stuff doesn't happen the way we want it to or happen the way, or, you know, happen, what we want doesn't happen. It's not that God has failed. That's just not what he said. <laughs> Either it's not what he said or it's not when he said he was going to do it. Mm -hmm. No, we got to know these promises to know what we're leaning on. Yeah. I want to pull up this comment right here. It's everything for me. Miss Elliot said, I says, I tell my family, stop treating God like a sugar daddy and pray without ceasing. You hear him better. That's so good. <laughs> People really be out here treating God like a sugar daddy. Oh, not for you. Yes. Like, I don't know, and I need it right now. You need to give it to me. Girl. It doesn't work like that. It, it really doesn't work like that. Yes, God is giving. He is gracious and all of that, but we have a responsibility to the promise yeah you know there are some there are some promises that we have just because we are we have accepted him as our as our father and we are his children um the promise of salvation you know um when we accept jesus and give our heart to jesus and this that you know then we have that promise of salvation but however there are certain promises that require responsibility mm -hmm. some promises require some obedience it's like when God told um, Abraham, go here. And when you do that, I'm going to bless you. Mm -hmm. That prom God promised Abraham something, but he also charged him with a responsibility. Mm -hmm. So he had a responsibility to be obedient. So sometimes when we're not seeing the promises of God fulfilled in our life, mm -hmm. it's because we have not been obedient. Yeah. It's because we have not uh, held to the responsibility of that promise. Mm -hmm. um, the things we told you to do. Right? Yeah, like what? What did God? What? What were the instructions? Mm -hmm. One of the simple scriptures that said, "If you abide in me, if you abide in me, 
than I'll abide in you. God ain't going to just come and abide in you. You got to abide in him first. Right. It's like the scripture that says, I stand at, he stands at the door and he knocks. You know, he's not just going to come in. If you know, you have the responsibility of opening the door. Mm-hmm. You know, so we have responsibilities to some of these promises. And that's why we, you got to know the word. You got to know, you got to know. Like, Lord, what, 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 what instruction have you given me? I know that this is what you said. And I believe that you're going to do it. But Lord, I want to make sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to make sure that I'm following the instructions. I want to make sure that I'm being obedient. So show me, you know, what it is I need to be doing to make sure that I don't miss your promise. Exactly. That's so good. But y'all don't want to miss it. Help me, Lord. Please do. What you saying? He'll remind you, too. So don't be afraid to ask. <laughs> Yeah, like you don't you don't get to just uh <laughs> to just walk in the in the fullness of the promises of God and and not have some responsibility to the relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like my kids if they don't clean their rooms or if they don't do their chores, then they don't get that promise of an allowance. Mm-hmm. You know, I promised you this. Yes, I did. That's exactly what I said I was going to do. However, I said if you do this. Yeah. then this is your promise. So if you fail to hold hold on you to your part of the deal, if I don't give you that money, it's not because I, I lied. Mm-hmm. It's not because I am um, can't be trusted. It's not because I'm not faithful to you. It's not because I don't love you. It's because you didn't do your part. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we blame God. We blame God. God didn't do it. He didn't do it. I can't trust him. He, 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 you know. But what did you not do? Right. What did I not do? So yeah, we do have we have some responsibility in this. I love it. It's not automatic. God's will, God's will for our lives aren't, isn't always automatic. So, so take responsibility. Right. Yeah. Obedience. If there are blessings of obedience, yes. There are blessings of disobedience. Hmm. We yeah. have responsibility sometimes. Yes. Which one are you gonna do? <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. It's like if you go if you go to work, your job promise you a paycheck. If you come to work. Yeah. Yeah. So if you don't go to work, you can't get mad at your job mm-hmm. for not making that direct deposit. Yeah. That's true. You failed at your part of the uh, your part of the responsibility. So it's the same way, the same way with God. We can't blame him a lot of times on some of this stuff because we're disobedient and we're irresponsible. And we want to be spoiled children that just want everything that we want when we ask for it with no responsibility. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> and be a sugar baby. <laughs> He's a father, but not that kind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I took Ashley out. So. <laughs> okay, so just wrapping this up. So I talked about your mentorship program. So how can someone sign up for the Beautiful Me mentorship program? And how can you be reached? Okay. In in short, you can sign up and find more information about the Beautiful Me, um, Beautiful Me Academy at www.beautifulmeministries.com. Um, you can click on the Beautiful Me Academy tab, or uh, there is also a pop up that'll show up, and you can just, you know, click from there. Um, and I can be reached also through. Uh, beautifulmeministries.com or you can find me on Instagram and Facebook. I, to, that's two uh, platform minimum, <laughs> maximum. <laughs> Can't do too many. But um, Facebook and Instagram um, I am Lakeisha R. Collins or Lakeisha Rainey Collins. I'm Googleable. You can put my name in Google if you can't remember that and it'll all pop up. All right, so both of those are, you know, YouTube and the... Oh, yeah, I forgot about YouTube because I, you know, I really haven't, haven't, been, <laughs> <laughs> haven't really been on here. Uh, 
I'm gonna get back to it. I said that the last time I was on here that I was gonna get back to it. <laughs> I'm still missing them by the same. Yeah. It's coming. I promise it's coming. It's coming. I promise it's really coming. But yes, I'm on YouTube and yo, on YouTube and Facebook as Lakeisha R. Collins and on Instagram as Lakeisha Lakeisha Rainey Collins with underscores in between. Mm-hmm. Lakeisha underscore Rainey underscore Collins. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so all of that, I think it's in the description. If not, we'll put a comment for everybody. Like I told y'all, I can speak. What is, what is I, I, I proclaim boldly that it'll help you out. I promise you guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm boldly. <laughs> so I want y'all to take Shay at her word and check her out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I see it. I see what she, she she promised that you guys will be feel. I like that feel feel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, how about you? You'll leave feeling like your beautiful self. Oh, Aww. <laughs> that's the goal. That's always the goal. <laughs> You're gonna leave with your crown on for sure. Yes. For sure. <laughs> All right. So, does anyone in the chat have any questions? Let me check our socials. Oh, yeah. Oh, they told me to stop saying it. Socials, because um, you sound so old. <laughs> I am a, oh, I have accepted the 60 year old me. Okay. <laughs> 65 for who <laughs> While we're checking our social media, thank you so much for coming today to kick off this uh, this new series that we have. I think you were the first person. I thank God for just landing on our hearts to have you on. So thank you for opening us up. Absolutely perfect. Thank you for having me. It's always fun hanging out with you. Y'all my favorite podcasters. <laughs> it's always fun to hang out. I'm I'm always honored to be invited. So I always have a yes for you. You're gonna be back next week. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I'm just <laughs> okay, I don't see anything. All right. All right, so that wraps it up for tonight. Thank you so much again for coming. Um, guys, we have given you her platform and all of her information, so we hope that you guys do check out her platform and all of the things that she has to offer. It is amazing uh, membership, so please do and go and be a part. All right. So we'll see you next time. <laughs> all right. Thank y'all so much for sticking with us tonight in the chat box. And also the people that are going to watch the replay as well. Thank you so much for tuning in and to the end. We hope that it did bless you guys. Um, and that you did receive a word. If you need to watch it again, go ahead and do it again so that you can get those gems that the teacher was dropping on today. Yes. I know I'm going to watch it again. Me too. Thank you, God, Dr. Carol. Thank you. We hope that you receive a word from it. We really do. And we want to thank everybody, like Ashley said, that commented in the chat. Y'all always come through for us, and we appreciate y'all. Yeah. Again, we want to thank Lakeisha for coming on again. And we just want to thank Holy Spirit for showing up in yeah. this place. So, be, oh, if you haven't, be sure to watch Ashley's video where she talks about pharmacies. Yeah. She's introducing the infrastructure for the May Flower series. So you definitely want to catch up on that Mm -hmm. before Saturday when the first episode of the series drops. And then also be sure to download our free printable where Ashley found 25 promises for you all to learn. Yeah. You can add it to your prayer life. You can add it to your regimen. So like Lakeisha told us, it's important that we know God's promises. Um, so that we can walk and continue to just uh, to lean on those pro- uh, those promises. So mm-hmm. add those to your regimen. Get to know them. Yeah, I added it to my regimen. Mm-hmm. I cleaned it out and then I'm going through day by day and um, studying the particular scripture mm-hmm. that we decided. So 
Mm-hmm. That's an idea. Mm-hmm. Or like mm-hmm. Ashley said, you can pray on. Yes. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. Mm-hmm. We're trying to beat this storm that's right. coming in. Um, but y'all keep us in y'all prayers. Um, and keep everybody in our city in your prayers. It's supposed to be a bad storm tonight, mm-hmm. and you know that we are covered. By the blood. <laughs> All right. So we will see you guys Saturday and then we'll see you guys live next Tuesday mm-hmm. with a very special podcast or interview on the podcast that we have been yes. So until then, as always, be we'll obedient be here. and we'll see y'all next time. Bye. To follow us on all social media platforms. It should be on the screen for you right now. Be sure to check out our Obedience Podcast Life Group, where we do life together. And then if you have any prayer requests, be sure to send those to obediencepodcast at gmail.com, and we will always stand in agreement with you. That is right.